For our migrating animal mixed media project, you can choose a caribou, a salmon, or a crane to make a stencil from. I'm going to choose a crane. And what you want to do is you want to cut out the shape of your animal while also preserving the negative space. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to make two different kinds of stencils, a positive space stencil and a negative space stencil. So I'm just going to cut one slit into the paper. And then for the rest of the time while I cut, I'm going to go just right around my animal without cutting off any chunks of paper. Because like I said, we want to preserve both the positive space and the negative space. The positive space is the shape itself. The negative space is the shape it leaves behind in the paper. And when we're done cutting, we're going to have two different kinds of stencils that we will use in our artwork. So I'm cutting super duper carefully around my crane shape. You might wanna take it super slow because each of these animal shapes has some little intricate parts to them and we wanna make sure that we get all those parts cut out well while still preserving the negative space. So notice I'm not cutting off any chunks of paper. I'm just kind of rotating the shape so I can cut all the way around it. Okay, so now I have my positive shape stencil here. And this I'm going to set aside because we're not going to need this today. And here is my negative space stencil. And you can see there's just one little slit in it. If that bothers you, you can take a piece of tape and tape it up. And I will do that quick. And now I'm ready to use this negative space stencil. Now I have a long piece of paper and I'm going to start um, stenciling my crane shapes onto the piece of paper and I'm going to make sure to show movement all the way across the paper, like the cranes are flying and migrating. So one way to show movement is to crop so I'm positioning my stencil um, halfway off and halfway on the paper to make it look like the crane is moving into the picture. I'm gonna use a white crayon and I'm going to color inside the stencil shape to leave that crane mark on my paper. Now it's gonna be really hard to see because obviously you're coloring white on white. So I want you to make sure to color press kind of hard and color as thoroughly as you can. So if you think you missed a spot, go over it anyway. We don't want to miss any spots. Now I'm going to position my crane going upwards at a diagonal that shows movement as well. So again, we're showing movement in our art. You can crop, you can position like diagonally, you can overlap. Uh, we are using repetitive shapes with our animals. That's another way to show movement is to repeat. So we're doing multiple animals on one piece of paper. So again, I'm coloring within my stencil with the white crayon. I'm pressing hard so that it does show up eventually. It's hard to see, so I'm just making sure I do get every little part of my crane. Okay, I'm gonna move my stencil again. Maybe I'll position it downward this time, diagonally, to show some movement. Mm -hmm. 
Last, I'll crop it again, half on, half off, to make it look like the crane is leaving the page. Now I'm done with my stencil and I will set that aside. Now it's time to do a watercolor wash over my paper so that my white crayon cranes show up. So I'm going to take my watercolor stuff, a cup of water, a paintbrush, and my watercolor paints, and I'm going to choose two analogous colors to paint over my paper. So analogous colors are right next to each other. You can use red and orange, orange and yellow, yellow and green, green and blue, or blue and purple because they're right next to each other in the tray. Do you think I could use purple and yellow? No, because they're far away from each other. How about blue and orange? Nope, they're not right next to each other. So your choices are the colors that are next to each other in the tray. I'm gonna choose orange and uh, red. So first for a watercolor wash, what you do is you just dunk your paintbrush in the water and you're going to gently spread water all over your paper. Just water, just enough to get your paper a little bit wet, a little bit shiny. That's gonna get the paint flowing when you eventually use the paint. So again, just a little bit shiny, not soaking wet. Right over the whole paper. Now I'm going to dip into my first analogous color. Get a lot on there, so you can really rub the paintbrush in the color palette there. And then I'm going to spread it over my paper where I already got it a little bit wet. And now you can see my cranes. My cranes are showing up and they look good. So that means that I colored with the white crayon very thoroughly all over. Remember to wash off your brush before you pick your next color. And again, I'm doing red and orange analogous colors right next to each other and spreading them over my paper. The reason we're using analogous colors is because analogous colors mix together well. They, they look really good when you put them right on top of each other. If we were to use colors that weren't analogous, they might end up making like a dull, muddy, brownish color, and that's not quite what we want in this painting. We want some bright, bright colors. All right, I've painted my entire paper and now it's going to go into the drying rack.